Welcome to 5.4. Yesterday we did addition of polynomials, and today we're doing subtraction. Subtraction is just marginally more difficult than addition, and the reason is, is this negative sign in front of the bracket. So the most important thing about subtracting polynomials okay, is distributing The negative sign, so I'll just put the negative sign through the second polynomial. And that's why we can't just drop the brackets like we did with addition. Okay, we have to multiply everything in the brackets by negative one. Multiply everything. By negative one. And if we don't do that, we're not going to get the right answer. So if we take this a little further, okay, negative 2x squared minus 6x actually becomes negative 1 times 2x squared okay, minus 1 times negative 6x. So it's minus one times both of those. And, my, and what this does is it really just changes the sign, right? So this was a positive 2x squared. Now it becomes a negative 2x squared. This was a negative 6x, but now because we're multiplying it by a negative, it becomes a positive 6x. So really all that's happening here when you've got the negative outside the brackets, it's just changing the signs of everything inside the brackets. Okay? You don't need to go through this whole multiplication process as long as you know that that rule exists. <clears throat> okay, so if we're going to subtract 2x squared minus 6x, we need to take away 2x squared tiles and 6 negative x tiles. Now, they're just talking about this polynomial expression right here, right? So we've got this represented. This is the 3x. Uh, I don't have the drawing here, but we've got the 3x squared minus 4x. It says model what's in the first set of brackets. Well, okay, I'll just draw it. We've got 1, 2, 3 positive x squared, and then we've got a minus 4 x's. So these are the minus 4 x's. Remember I said we're going to shade all of our minuses, so I'm just going to just going to kind of color these in a little bit. Okay. And then that's what's in the first set of brackets. Okay. So that would be representing this guy. So if we need to subtract 2x squared minus 6x from what we just drew here, we need to take away 2x squared tiles. So that's 2x squared tiles we're taking away. And we also have to take away 6x tiles. Okay, We don't have 6x tiles. We started with a negative 4x tiles, which means we actually had to put two more negative x tiles on there. Okay. So we see we needed two more x negative x tiles, so we add two zero pairs of x tiles. So we had to subtract two, right? Let me put it up here. Yeah. So we just had to. We basically we just had to tack these on because we knew we didn't we didn't have enough. So the remaining tiles that we have left, okay, are we've got this uh, x squared right here, okay, and we've got a positive two x. We started out with negative four, right? And we had to subtract a negative, right? So we had to subtract a negative of 6. So if we get rid of that negative 6, we're just left with the two positive ones. I mean, I, I frankly, I think that's kind of a confusing way of saying it. Um, let's just look at the x's over here. Okay, I think, I think it's more complicated to draw that one than it is to just kind of understand it. If we started with a negative 4x, right, and then we had to subtract a negative 6x, well, what do we do whenever we see negative signs back to back, right? We just know that's a positive. So we're really left with negative 4x plus 6x. So we've got a negative 4, and then we're adding 6 to it, and that means we have to end up on the positive side by 2x, which is how we go there. So frankly, I think that, that you know, the pictorial representation of this is more confusing than just taking the symbols and saying, well, I know that if I, you know, if I add 6 to negative 4, I know I'm going to end up with a positive 2. So at the end, 
you know, these ones were crossed out. These ones were crossed out by our subtraction. We got left with the x squared, and then we got left with the two x's. Now, properties of integers. This is what I was talking about at the very top. You have to be very careful when you're doing subtraction with a negative sign in front of the bracket because it applies. You have to multiply out the hidden ones. And what that essentially does is just change the sign. So this 2x positive becomes a negative 2x. And this negative 6x, well, if you change the negative sign, it's going to be a positive 6x. So as long as you remember to do that, the process of subtracting polynomials isn't really any different or any more difficult than the process of adding polynomials, which, as we found out yesterday, was not particularly difficult. Let's see, my computer is frozen here, so I'm just going to try to get it back. It seems to be back. That's good. All right, let's do some more examples here. We're going to subtract negative 2a squared minus, or sorry, plus a minus 1. Okay, we're going to start with that, and then we're going to subtract from that negative a squared minus 3a plus 2. It says use algebra tiles. Okay, well, let's just start with the first one. Okay, I'll just draw them this time. So we've got big square. We've got two of those, and those are both negative, so I'll just... I'll just uh, shade them in a little bit. Then I've got a plus a, so that's going to be a positive one of these. And then I got minus one, so that's going to be a shaded in little box. Sorry, I had some slight video problems there. Hopefully we're back on track here. So what I want to do with this second set, because I took this first uh, polynomial and I basically dropped the brackets when I was drawing the algebra tiles. I'm actually going to do the same thing here, right? So I'm going to make sure that I and maybe make sure that I, I change the, the, uh, the signs where possible. So what I need to do here is I need to subtract, okay? So I need to subtract one, ooh, not sure why that happened. I need to subtract one of these a squared blocks, and then I've got to worry about subtracting, okay? I've got to subtract a negative three a's. Right? So if I'm subtracting a negative, that actually flips that to a positive, right? And while I'm at it, um, if I'm subtracting, uh, I forgot to flip my sign on this one. If I'm subtracting a negative, that one becomes negative too. Sorry, I should just be keeping track of my signs up top here for all of them. I forgot for my a squared. So that's going to be a negative, turn from a positive to a negative. A negative times a negative is going to turn that into a positive, and a negative times a positive is going to turn that into a negative. So if you just want to keep track of that way, it's probably a probably a better way to do it. So really, what we're doing here is we're just gonna we're just gonna redraw what's in the brackets, but apply the negative sign, and then let's combine our like terms and uh, see what we have left over. Sorry, make sure why that's crossed out. Hit on myself here. Yoink. Okay, so we've got uh, our positive three a's, and now we're going to need negative two. Okay, so we're going to need two of these negatives, right? So we basically just took what was in the brackets, flipped the signs, and then redrew them. So at this point, after we've done that, what we're actually doing is adding, because we've already applied the negative when we multiplied it through the brackets. So all I did here was simplify things by turning it into an addition question. So if we're going to add these shapes together, let's look at what our like terms are. Okay, we've got that one, then we've got three of these guys, and then we've got two more of these guys. Okay, so if we add those together, right, it doesn't look like anything's going to cancel out, does it? Right, because we've got nothing but negatives here with the big squares. We've got nothing but positives for the rectangles. And we've got nothing but negatives for the constants. So what's really happening here is now we're left with, okay, now we're left with negative 3x, or a squared, sorry, we're using a's here. Negative 3a squared. And we've got a positive 4a's. And then we've got a negative 3 as our constant. So let's just check that on the other side symbolically and see if we get the same answer as when we used the algebra tiles. All right, so let's go with our, or 
original question, negative 2a squared plus a minus 1, and then subtract from that a squared uh, minus 3a plus 2. Okay, let's drop the brackets. We can always drop the brackets on the first one. That's never a problem. So negative 2a squared plus a minus 1. Now we have to apply this negative through all of the other terms. So if you want to draw like a little arrow to help you remember that, sometimes people do that just to remember. So an a squared, okay, so that's positive times a negative is going to be a negative a squared. And a negative times a negative is going to be a positive 3a. And a negative times a positive is going to be a negative 2. So now let's group our like terms. Negative 2a squared. And then okay, we've got this one. We've got this one. Then we've got our a's. And then we've got the rest. So negative 2a squared. And then minus another one. Okay, I'll just do this in two steps <clears throat> just to get them together. And then I've got a positive a and a positive 3a, and then I've got a negative 1 and then a negative 2. So we've got these grouped, got these grouped in a way that we know they're like terms. Here's our a squareds, here's our a's, and here's our constants. Negative 2a squared minus another one is going to be negative 3a squared. a plus 3a, okay, that's going to give us 4a's, and then a negative 1 minus 2 more is going to give us negative 3. So if we look what we had left over from our tile work, okay, it, it equates the exact same thing that we got on this side symbolically. So some people are, uh, you know, prefer a visual approach to it. Some people move right to the symbolically uh, generated polynomials. Uh, and I'm okay either way. I mean, if, if this helps you, uh, by all means, use the, use the algebra tiles. I, I myself gravitate more to symbolically. Uh, it just makes more sense to me here than uh, than using the the, pic the picture stuff. But uh, again, everybody learns differently, so you, you pick which one's best for you. But there will be an expectation that you can do it both ways. Use the properties of integers. Okay, all that's saying is is when you see this negative sign here, make sure that you multiply it all the way through. So let's do that as our very first step. Let's make sure that we multiply this negative sign all the way through when we're rewriting this. So we can always drop the first brackets. That's never a problem. A2a squared plus a minus 1. Okay, now let's worry about the second set. So we've got a negative times a positive. I think this is the same question as before. I just did it on the, on the top of the page. I'm, I'm now recognizing this is the exact same. So I'll do it very quickly. We've got a positive turns to a negative. A negative times a negative is positive. And a negative times a positive is a negative. Then we grouped our uh, a squareds. We grouped our a's, we grouped our constants, and this is exactly what I did on the previous page with the exact same numbers. It equals out to the negative 3a, sorry, this is a squared, negative 3a squared uh, plus uh, 4a, sorry, and minus 3. I just chose to do it on the previous page. All right, here's another example, but we'll use the exact same approach. So let's drop the brackets on the first one. 5x squared minus 3. Oh, we got an xy in this one. Okay, that looks a little different. Plus 2y squared. Now let's apply that negative to every term. And this is a trinomial, so there's three terms. But it would, it would be just the same if there was two terms or one term, or maybe there's four or five terms. It's always the same. If there is something in brackets separated by minus or plus and a negative sign out front, you have to multiply everything by negative 1. And again, the shortcut for that is it just changes the sign. So 8 squared or 8x squared positive times that negative 1 is going to be a negative, right? Negative 8x squared. And then a negative times a negative is going to be a positive oops, plus 7xy. And then a negative times a negative again is also going to be a positive 4y squared. Alphabetically and with the largest exponents, let's see if we can group these. So we've got the 5x squared there. I'll just do my little trick here. Uh, these are the y squareds. And uh, maybe I'll put a little square there for the x, y's. So 5x squared minus 8x squared. Then we'll go to our y's because remember the degree of this, the exponent is higher than these exponents. So that's going to be the plus 2y squared plus the 4y squared. My bad idea at this point. This one's not too long, but. 
just crossing them out helps me. Minus 3xy plus positive 7xy. And there's no constants. Okay, everything's got a variable in it this time. Where's our grouping? There's our like terms, like terms, like terms. So 5x squared minus 8x squared. Okay, so just picture it this way. I got 5 of the green big, uh, big green squares. And I got to take away 8. Well, I cancel out 5 of them. I'm left with 3 of the negative ones, right? So 5 minus 8 is negative 3x squared. I'd be left with 3 red big squares. Now I've got a positive plus a positive. We can all do that, right? 2 plus 4 is 6y squared. Everything's positive. Then we've got a negative 3xy and a positive 7xy. That's going to lead to a positive 4xy. So we simplified that symbolically, but we also could have done it with the algebra tiles and using the exact same process, just using the manipulatives instead. Um, in general, we like to gravitate more toward the symbolic version because it's, it's efficient. You know, you don't need to be carrying around algebra tiles in your pocket. Uh, uh, so, you know, this doesn't take as long. It's easier to write out and easier to represent. But that doesn't mean you can't use algebra tiles to solve these problems. You use what works best for you. But if you can do it the symbolic way, I would recommend it. See, I would recommend it because it will, uh, uh, it'll just be more efficient for you. Okay, so now it says, uh, let's check the answer. And it says, add the difference to the second polynomial. Add the difference to the second polynomial. Now, this is one of those, uh, this is one of those questions, okay? This is one of those questions that it's, you know, using a sort of simplified numbers to represent each part of the polynomial. Okay, so if we know that 10 minus 6 equals 4, well, essentially what we've done up here is we've said this is the six, uh, sorry, this is the 10, right? This is the 6 over here, and then this would be the 4, which would be the answer, right? So it's just that, that trick I showed you where you use simpler numbers and simple equations, and then you assign one of those simple numbers to each of the more difficult things, and then you'll you'll be able to keep yourself, you know, straight. So really what I need to do here, okay, to check this, okay, it says add the difference to the second polynomial. Well, this would be the difference, right? Because the difference is the answer to a subtraction question, which this was. So what it wants us to do is it add this to the second polynomial, and we should get this. And if you look at the simplified numbers we used, what we're saying is if I add four to 6, should I get 10? And I think logically we can say, yes, that should work. So if it works with the simple numbers, it should work with the polynomials as well. So once again, we said, let's take the 4 plus the 6 and make it equal 10. We know that's true. So now let's just substitute in the polynomials for those simplified numbers. So the 4 was negative, I'll use brackets, I'll always use brackets, negative 3x squared plus 6y squared plus 4xy, okay? So that was the 4, and we have to add that to the 6. Which one was the 6? This was the 6, the second polynomial. All right, so the second polynomial is going to be, now we have to ignore the, the negative sign. Now we're just talking about stuff in the brackets. So this is going to be plus 8x squared, okay, minus 7xy, minus 4y squared. As my pen starts to act up again. And what we're checking, because remember, we're checking something. So is this equal to, is this equal to the 10? Okay. Question mark. Is this equal? Okay, so the 6 part was related to this. And now what's the 10 part? Well, the 10 part is the first polynomial, which was 5x squared plus, oops, sorry, minus 3x. 5x. Okay, I'm just going to pause my video here because it looks like my pen's going haywire again. Join back up with you in a second. Something about being on video. These pens just don't like to be on video. Uh, where was I? Oh, okay, sorry. 5x squared. Pen's still a little wonky, but we'll just have to deal with it. Minus 3xy. Sorry that I ran into this when I ran out of room. Plus 2xy. 
or sorry, 2y squared. Mistake. 2y squared. So we're checking. You know, we know in our heads that the, uh, that the 4 plus the 6 should equal the 10. So if that's true and we didn't make any mistakes above, this part plus this part should equal this part. And that's what we're checking. So let's do what we normally do. Okay. Let's drop the brackets first. So negative 3x squared plus 6y squared plus 4xy. Easy to drop the brackets now because it's addition at this point. So plus 8x squared minus 7xy minus, uh, was, that, was that a 4 or a 9? Kind of sloppy there. Uh, that was a 4. Okay, so minus 4 y squared, and then still, on the other side, does that equal, we don't have to change this one, 5x squared minus 3xy plus 2y squared. You notice that the textbook writes them in alphabetical order despite the degree, so it starts with the x squared, and then it goes to the x's, and then it goes to the y's. It's not wrong if you write it the other way, um, it's just a different convention. So don't worry, if, if, you, if, if, you, if you put the y squared after the x squared, um, it, it certainly wouldn't be wrong. Okay, let's group like we normally do. I'm going to put squiggles under the x squareds. I'm going to put dots under the y squares. And then I should be able to find the other ones. So I've got negative 3x squared. Come on, pen. Negative 3x squared. Oh, pen. Uh, why have you forsaken me? Squiggle up here. All right, x squared. Uh, okay, that one's gone. Then we've got plus 8x squared. That one's gone. Now let's look at the, uh, just because of the xy's are next here, I'll look at the xy's next. So I've got plus 4xy. And then I've got minus 7xy. Get rid of that one. Now I'll do my y squares. I've got plus 6 y squared, and then my last term here is minus 4y squared, okay, and then again, does that equal this? I'm just going to put these two little dashes here, so I don't have to write this whole thing out again. Let's group our terms, like term there, like terms there, like terms there. We've got a negative 3 plus a positive 8, so that's going to take us to positive 5x squared. Then we've got a positive 4xy, and then we've got to take away 7xy, so that's going to take us down to negative 3xy. And then we've got a positive 6y squared, and we've got to take away 4 of those, which leaves us with a positive 2y squared. Now let's check. Does that equal what's on the other side? 5x squared minus 3xy plus 2y squared. Does that look the same on both sides? Yes, it does, so it checks. Okay. And that looks like we did a lot of writing um, to, to check this answer here. I went through very carefully, step by step. It's very possible you could jump, you could skip this step right here and this jump right to there, and you, possibly you could also jump from here down to there. I'm showing every single step of the process in detail. You can skip a couple of those steps, but please don't go right to the... Uh, right from the question to the final answer because it's too easy to make a mistake and we can't grant you part marks if you if you make a mistake along the way so you got time you might as well write out uh, and show us your work so that is subtraction and again i don't think it's necessarily a whole lot more difficult than addition because really all you're doing is you're turning a subtraction question into an addition question by distributing this negative sign and changing the signs of the stuff in the in in the brackets Okay, so as soon as you do that, you've, you've reduced your error to almost nothing. So if you can do this part properly, you've made it so that you're very unlikely to make errors after that point. And then it's just a matter of, can you do simple addition and subtraction? 5 minus 8, you know, 2 plus 4, negative 3 plus 7. And if you can do that, you don't need to worry about the variables at all, as long as you can group them together. Know that xy's are the same as xy's. Know that two y square or that y squareds are the same as y squareds, and the same thing with x squared and x squared. One more thing, okay? One more thing I've just thought of that I'm going to mention that isn't in uh, the workbook package, and that is, it shouldn't be written this way. But if you see five x y, okay, and seven y x, okay, 
these are actually like terms, okay? Now, I'm not saying the 5 is the same as the 7, but I'm saying xy is the same as yx, right? The reason for that is, is if you think about it, let's say that 5, and let's say the x is 2, and let's say the y is 3, okay? Now, on this side, it would be 7 times 3 times 2, because the order's reversed. But does that change the value of what 3 times 2 is? It doesn't, right? Because 2 times 3 is still going to be 6. It doesn't matter which way you go, whether you do 2 times 3 or 3 times 6. So the 3 times 2 and the 2 times 3 are the same thing. So these are actually like terms. If you go back to the beginning and you look at this guy right here, x, y, and uh, y, x are like terms. What I would do is if I got that written that way in a question, I would instantly write it out as 5xy plus 7xy. I would do that instantly. Okay, And that just reduces the chance that you're going to think because the order is different when you're doing your multiplication or when you're doing your addition and subtraction down here. That's going to reduce that error. Now, to be, to be honest, you should not see that written anywhere like this. I'm pretty sure the textbook writes everything alphabetically and doesn't try to intentionally trick you with one of those. But if you ever do see that, make sure that you remember, okay, if it's just an X with the same exponent and a Y with the same exponent, just because it might be written backwards doesn't mean they're not like terms. So in this one, even though it looks like you can't add those together, you really could. It's really a 5xy plus a 7xy equals a 12xy. Um, why do I have an arrow written there? That probably is confusing after the point because these two questions have nothing in common. I just wanted to make a little note on that in the corner, just in case you happen to see uh, a question where the, where the variables are written in different ways but mean the same thing. Okay, as always... Any questions or concerns, let us know via email, and uh, you should be in good shape to do the subtraction questions as well as the addition questions. And then over here, so what do I need to subtract from this? I need to subtract.